All right, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing kind of like an underwater anti-gravity drip effect. So by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to make something that looks like this. Full disclosure, I record like the speed art of this before within Illustrator. I started out with the idea of creating like an anti-gravity drip effect. So like text is dripping, but and maybe it's in like a vacuum or something and the text is like dripping upwards. Um, so that was kind of like my initial plan, but then I guess like the color scheme that I chose kind of made it actually look a little bit more like an underwater effect. Uh, it almost looked like bubbles were coming off of it and the text was like liquefying. I don't know. You can call it like an anti-gravity drip effect or like an underwater effect. I think kind of like depending on the color palette that you choose, that's kind of going to affect what this looks like. But I think mine kind of looks more underwater, but I still chose the word drip. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. As always, if you guys are interested in content like this, it'd be awesome if you subscribe to the channel uh, or leave a like below for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'm pretty responsive on here, so uh, I'll definitely get back to you. And with all that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is open up a new document. It doesn't really matter what size, uh, but I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080 for this tutorial since it's pretty standard. Then what you're going to want to do is zoom out so you can see your whole artboard and type some text. So, like I said before, I'm going to use the word drip because that's kind of what I was going for originally, but I don't know. I don't know if it worked out that way, but regardless. Um, so, I would pick something that's kind of round. I'm going to go with the uh, text chi for this one. Specifically, I'm going to go with chi con shred. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Chi con shred. Um, but I would definitely go with something kind of bubbly because uh, obviously drips are kind of... Kind of bubbly, but I would definitely go with something like kind of round because uh, if you go with something really like with hard edges, it's not going to look like super drippy or organic. But I guess since you're going to end up hand drawing all the text, it doesn't matter too much, whatever you choose. So once you have your text typed and sized, what you're going to want to do is go up to object and envelope distort. And then we're going to be selecting arc upper. I think a bend value of around 20% works pretty good. Basically what we want to do is kind of bend this up so it looks like the text is actually like dripping up or like expanding up, I would say, um, because the gravity is kind of pulling it up or the vacuum or whatever it's in is like pulling up the text. So uh, I'm going to go with a bend value of about 20%. It looks good to me. And again, this is just for like kind of an outline of the text. We're going to be drawing around this, so it doesn't really matter. Then what you're going to want to do so you can see like where the gravity or the vacuum is pulling the text more easily um, is actually flip the text upside down. So it kind of like gives you uh, something to work off of. Then from here what you should do is probably like lower the opacity so it's easier to see what you're drawing on top of it and actually lock that text in place so you can't bump it. Then pretty much from here all you do is you take your brush tool. Uh, you can kind of go with whatever size you want um, but I went with like a three point round brush uh, and then you just basically draw on top of this text and try to make like some bubbly uh, drips kind of maybe coming off the corners I did. I did a lot coming off the corners because when you come off the corners, I, I don't know, I feel like stuff kind of runs down the side of text or would naturally run down the side of text. Um, so with the brush tool, this uh, smooths it out super, super well. So don't be too worried about like being jagged or making it perfect um, because Adobe Illustrator will smooth that out and you'll see that here. Yeah, I mean, it makes it smooths out your text pretty well. So I would also definitely recommend kind of creating like a little circle, uh, a little bit wider than the actual drip of the text. I think that kind of kind of works pretty good. Uh, makes it look like it's bubbling, uh, you know, like about to break off of the text. Um, but yeah, so basically you just do this for all your text, go all the way around, uh, and make sure you trace the insides of the circles too. And I'll check back with you when I'm done with all this. So next what you're going to want to do is clean up some of the anchor points. Now naturally when you draw with the brush tool it leaves kind of some anchor points that uh, actually come to jagged edges and especially when you're doing something with drip text you don't really want any jagged edges. You want everything to be dripping, you know, like kind of bubbling off the text and you want everything to be super round and clean. So all you're going to do to round that off is take your direct selection tool and you can uh, move anchor points and uh, adjust the angles of those anchor points so that everything kind of smooths itself out and looks more bubbly. Um, and you're also going to want to make sure that all of your anchor points, if you have one like hanging off to the side or something like that, you want to make sure you connect them and then actually select all of the text for each letter uh, individually and uh, make sure that they're joined together. Otherwise, you won't be able to fill them super easily. So if you're having trouble filling these texts with color, that's most likely why, uh, is that your anchor points aren't connected. 
or, or your shape is not joined. So to join it, all you do is select all the text, right click on it, and uh, go down to join. So now what I'm going to do is create a background so we have something to work off of. Uh, and once you have that done, what I'm going to do is actually fill all of these texts with a gradient. Um, so basically what I did is you make sure all of the lines are joined together. And what you do is just select the text, make sure it's filled. And for anything that has uh, like a cutout center of it, some negative space in the center, like the D or the R or the P, what you do is just select both of the shapes that you drew. So the one around the outside and the one on the inside. And you go to your Pathfinder tool and select minus front. And that should cut out the center. So if that doesn't cut out that center, that probably means that you drew the inside of the circle first. And all you need to do is select the inside of the circle and um, make sure you hit Command, Shift, and then forward bracket. And that will bring it to the front so that you can do the minus front and create that negative space within it. Um, and for these, I'm going to do the gradient so that it kind of goes vertical. Um, so the reason I'm doing that instead of like left to right is that it kind of creates movement in the text kind of going up. Again, making that text kind of stretch vertically. So uh, any vertical movement we can create kind of uh, helps emphasize that. And then from there, really all you do is take your brush tool again and draw some squiggly lines. Again, reinforcing that upward motion. So you're going to make sure you kind of create some arcs that go up or some waves that go up. So also when you're doing this brush along the outside, what I would do is drop the opacity down to like between 20 and 50 percent. Um, and that way you'll have kind of a variation in the color of the lines that you're drawing with the brush tool um, within the text. So it kind of like matches the gradient almost. And then from there, all you do is create some bubbles, like little circles that are coming off of the text. Um, for me, I did a bunch of little circles and I think that is part of what kind of made it look like it's underwater, but I'm not mad at that. It's like a little bit different than what I was going for, but I think it's still successful as a design. So yeah, this is pretty much what you end up with at the end. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And if you guys ended up with something different, I would love to see it. So definitely leave it in the comments. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it helped some of you guys out. Uh, if it did, it would be awesome if you would leave a like below for the YouTube algorithm. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Sometimes the brush tool can be a little bit finicky, so I'd love to help you guys out. Uh, offer any insight I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.